Got hey, Frank, it. can you hear us? Yes, I can. Awesome. Well, if you're ready to get started, we can go. Yeah, I'm ready. How you guys doing? Let's start with Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Frank, how you doing? Doing well. How you doing, man? Good, thanks. Hey, just wanted to see what your off season was like and also what's on the table for you to prove this season. Oh, man, I had a wonderful off season. Um, you know, kind of untraditional with everything that's been going on, you know, with the COVID and stuff like that. But, um, you know, just try to stay focused, as focused as possible. Um, you know, and they closed a lot of gyms and stuff where I was at, where I trained out in Los Angeles. But, you know, was able to do a lot of um, good things still and, you know, focus on training, just a lot more time to spend with my family and, you know, with people who I hadn't necessarily, you know, had time to catch up with over the years, um, you know, a lot more time to handle some business and stuff like that. You know, we had played a lot of football, you know, winning the Super Bowl, so a lot of the, you know, that extra time to focus on some of the stuff off the field. So, um, you know, that was the dopest part about the off season. Let's go to Bob Fesco. Go ahead, Bob. Hey, Frank, I just want to kind of know, as, as you're one of the team leaders out there, what, what's the, like, the ability for you guys to hold everybody accountable for doing the right things away from the facility, seeing what, you know, the Hunt family and everybody invested in to you guys to have the facility up and running the way it is for the COVID stuff? Oh, man, you know, shouts out to them because, I mean, we walk around, you guys haven't really been able to see, but um, we walk around and they've done a magnificent job, you know, from the top to the bottom, you know, and just every day, you know, providing us with a safe, and, um, you know, a safe and energetic, you know, um, learning community, basically, you know, for us to come in and be able to, you know, sit in class and sit in, um, you know, go on the field and be able to produce and practice in the safe, you know, and, uh, you know, community. And I feel like that's been most important. You know, there's been so many questions about, you know, the safety of our players, safety of the coaches, you know, us having to go home and stuff. And I, I just, you know, feel like, you know, everybody over here in our building, they just done an excellent job and, you know, providing us with a, you know, like I said, a safe community for us to work in. Let's go to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, what's up, Frank? Um, good. Um, I wonder if you could backtrack a little bit to 12 months ago. You know, you had come in, you hadn't played for the Chiefs yet, you had signed a big contract. Um, so I'm wondering about the mental aspect that maybe it's different this year, if maybe it's a little bit more relaxed. And then also physically, I mean, it was around this time or maybe a couple weeks later that you started dealing with that pinched nerve. So um, just if you could compare the, the, the mental and physical aspects of what you're feeling right now compared to this time last year. Um, man, I feel excellent. Um, you know, of course, you, you're going to go through stuff. Being a football player, you're going to always feel a little nicks and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm not feeling that pinched nerve, and I feel like that's the most important thing right now for me. You know, I had a slow start last year. You know, um, I want to say – you know, I'm always play field. I don't give excuses. I really don't care about excuses and stuff like that. But I had a slow start. You know, I had some things hold me back. And um, you know, I was so adamant about getting back. If you was around me at all last year, if you spent some time in that locker room as, um, you know, one of the media guys, um, you know how adamant I was about just getting back and how much I wanted to heal up as fast as I could and, you know, try to do some things faster than what God, you know, had to plan for us. So, but, you know, things came around when it, when it did, you know, and it, you know, I'll stay focused on treatment. You know, shout out to, you know, our treatment room. They do an excellent job with, you know, like I said, getting us back out on that field. And, um, but, you know, the other part is your part. You got to be at treatment. You got to focus. You got to, you know, take it all in, understand what they're trying to do to get you back. And um, that's all I did. I bought into what they were telling me. You know, you got to trust your, your trainers at some point and understand they want the best for you. And I did that. And I was able to get back out there and help my team win the Super Bowl. Let's go to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Frank, good to see you. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, for the guys that are returning on defense, obviously I know you're happy with, with Chris being with you and obviously having a relationship with Tyron and those guys. Um, now that you all are together, what have the conversations been like on what you all want to accomplish in the second part of this, you know, sort of defensive run? And then adding a new guy like Taco in, just how eager are you to see what he does in this defense and how much have you tried to sort of get him accustomed to obviously, you know, unusual circumstances in the building, but getting more, you know, used to the guys, the new guys around him. Yeah. Um, honestly, Taco is a fun, energetic type of guy to be around. But um, going off what you had first asked, you know, it's just with me and Tyron and, you know, some of the other guys who got hit, you got, you know, it's a host of guys, you know, who are um, leaders on that defensive side. But, you know, me and Tyron, the main thing is, man, just staying in tune with each other. You know, I feel like that's the biggest thing that happens when guys have success. Guys go win the Super Bowl. 
you know, um, you got prima donnas, you got this guy wanting to go off and do this, you got different guys coming to work with different mindsets. They're not focused on the one goal, and that's to win the championship. And um, I feel like that's where our strength is, you know, and we haven't wavered from that. It's having that short memory. Um, yeah, we won the Super Bowl last year, but that was last year. You know, some guys get, you know, cocky. They, they love that feeling. They love the emotions of winning it and, and carry that on the next year. And they don't really do shit for them, you know, on the field for, um, you know, for this year, you know, um, honestly. It, us being champions last year, nobody cares about that. I know our coach don't care about that. You know, that's all fun. You know, that's nice. You know, it's pretty nice. It's cute and all, but, you know, we got um, stuff to do this year and a um, whole new set of goals. Um, we got to win the AFC championship, and that's where it starts. Let's go to Matt McMullen. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Frank. Kind of a similar question, actually, but you guys were the best NFL, best defense in the NFL from week 11, basically, through the end of the year. With guys like you and Tyron and the leaders you have on this team, what gives you confidence you guys could be the best defense in the NFL to start this season? And just our, our ability to um, work and practice, I feel, I feel like that's where we beat every team. Um, can't give them too much, but um, I mean, you guys know, we out there flying around, having fun, um, and challenging each other. I feel like it's a lot of competition. You know, when you got guys that's um, coming into work day in, day out, whether it's pushing you to be the best at your position or be the best on defense or be the best you can be offensively or be the best teammates you can be for the guys who's not playing necessarily. You know, those guys' roles are just as important as, you know, the guys out there running around on the field. You know, I couldn't run around on the field, you know, and do what I do if I didn't have my boys on the sideline or those guys who I'm in practice working hard with every day. If I didn't have those guys pushing me to be better than what I am. Let's go to James Palmer. Go ahead, James. Hey, Frank, hope you're doing well, man. Uh, kind of two parts to this. When you guys go over what you want to do schematically, how much do you look at different pressures you guys are working on now that you probably in year one couldn't even probably maybe get to? Is it expanding in that sense of what you guys can do to bring pressure to the quarterback? And then also with Chris coming back and you and him, how does – his play impact what you see from a tackle and how do you impact kind of what Chris does when you guys go over film? Um, <laughs> man, that's a good question. But it's kind of simple. I mean, it's an easy answer. It's a great question, but an easy answer. When you, when I, when you start asking questions about me and Chris, I get kind of, I get, um, I get, I get a nice smile come over my face, I guess, because that's my dog. You know, I'm so happy he got paid and stuff. He was able to come back, you know, with all those type of things. But, just so happy, man. And, um, you know, with Chris, you know, he's a smart player. You know, he's so fun to be around, uh, you know, off the field and even on the field, but he's such a smart player. And he seems like he just gets better and better. You know, I remember watching him on Chris one. You know, I was a younger player, probably, what, three or whatever, and he was he just a year behind me, really. And uh, watching him, and I'm like, wow, who's a young guy? You know what I mean? He's a beast. And, uh, you know, finally getting the chance to get out here, get um, acclimated with the system and to be able to play with him. You know, um, last year was just, it was great. And now, you know, us, we talk all the time and um, we look at each other and we understand, you know, what's asked of us. We understand the type of pressure that, that's put on players like us. But, um, you know, we embrace it too. You know, it's all fun. It's fun. Like I tell him, you know, have fun with it. You know, don't let it stress you out too much. And uh, he tell me the same, like we're going to be the best, you know, um, two defensive linemen ever to play the game together. And that's one of the things we always talk about. You know, we got, you know, a few years to be something great. You know, just the reality of the game. You know, you got a few years in that window to, to do something great and to be the greatest you can be at doing it. And um, why not do it? And um, to piggyback on your other answer, just about with the, um, the defense. You know, we just constantly just stand fresh, man. You, you buy in the pressures and stuff. Pressure's nice. You know, I love four-man pass rushes, though. You know, I tell my linebackers they can drop back there and get off the way. They be in a waste of time. Let's go to Danny Wilniak. Go ahead, Danny. Hi, Frank. How you doing, man? Good job, Danny. <laughs> Good. So, Andy Reid talks a lot about how the preseason is vital for the offense to get timing down before you go into the regular season. But how much does not having preseason games impact defense, and how do you guys have to change your mentality as you go into the regular season without those, like, scrimmage games? Man, well, the biggest thing, from what I understand as, a, you know, being younger and more time I was playing in the preseason is just the development part. I feel like that's a huge, um, you know, development period that the rookies are going to miss. You know, I was telling someone today, like, man, it's kind of going to be untraditional this year because 
you know, y'all missing a huge part of the game. And that was that. Really, it's that after you get drafted, it's that first acclimation period, of, you know, introducing them to the NFL. Then you got to go through training camp and stuff like that. Like, they missed a lot of it. So it's like y'all got to really understand that y'all work is going to come from practice. It's going to come from training camp. It's going to come from really locking in and understanding, understanding this fam. Because y'all not going to have an acclimation period like the preseason where it's, you know, quote, unquote, you know, every the, the, the competition level is the same. And, you know what I mean? You're going right into the fire, basically. You know, you're going to a league where you got a 12-year pro, all pro, who you might be going against, and you got to be ready for them. Just simple as put. I mean, I – I first got in the league, I had to prepare for Trent Williams, Jason Peters, and all these type of dudes all within the first four or five weeks of my season. I'm just looking at myself like, wow, that's going to be a long year. You know, I understood. But if you embrace it, you know, tell them simply, welcome to the party. We've got time for one more, guys. Let's go to Darren. Go ahead, Darren. Hey, Frank, I thank you first of all for joining us, man. And, uh, uh, you know, my question is scared away from, from the football field, but obviously you, you know, it touched you obviously to pay for the funeral of, uh, of Legion of Telephero. And I want to know like, what, what, what went into your thought process and, and how, how much more active will we see players like you inside the Kansas City community? Because this happened just six blocks from where I live here in Kansas City. So I want to know, you know, like, have you talked with other players and how, how would, would Patrick's uh, voter registration, will you all be instrumental in the third and fifth district here in Kansas City where, where voter registration and voter suppression will be taking place come November? Yes, man, that's crazy you mentioned that about voting. Actually, I'm going to get back to the other part, but that's crazy you mentioned that about voting because um, as far as Kansas City Chiefs are concerned, our um, staff has been very active in just, you know, um, helping us get registered if you're not registered voting in the state or um, whether you're an absentee voter, um, and just explaining the language. Some guys don't understand the language of voting, you know, one, because they never really talked about it, they've never been comfortable talking about it to somebody, but um, it's so important. I feel like, and then just coming up with this, this um, you know, this voting mark, it's just so important for, for, for the younger people who, you know, are able to vote, who never voted, or, you know, probably look at it like, oh, it's not that serious, or my vote don't count. I feel like it's very important for you to get out there and, and understand who you're voting for, you know, do some research and understand the candidates and everything, you know, because, you know, you don't, don't do it by popular demand on what you read on Instagram and TV because, you know, sometimes that can affect the outcome of our country in the years to come. But um, on another on the other note with, you know, um, my young boy, man, it's, it's sad because you got, you know, growing up, myself growing up in the inner city community, man, I had plenty of nights where I had to, you know, duck some bullets, duck, you know, they shot my house up twice, two days back to back, growing up in inner city, Los Angeles. And um, they shot our house up twice back to back in one week. And um, I remember being a kid laying down on the couch and my auntie putting me on the carpet and, um, you know, seeing bullets fly through my house. You know, then the next day doing, seeing it again and then watching my uncle get shot. And then, you know, fast forward and then, I, um, you know, the story comes out about Lee John and what's going on with that. It's like, come on, you know, somebody had to be there and I just – had it on my mind. You know, I don't like credit for stuff like that because it's just natural to me. But um, somebody had to do it. Somebody had to be there. Would I challenge other people to step up and do things like that? I don't know. You know, like I said, it's just me. You know, it's just whether they step up or not, I feel like I'm, I'm going to always do things like that. It's just pure. I'm, I got a pure heart, you know, and when things like that happen and I don't see nothing taking, you know, nobody taking action or, you know, um, it's not really being talked about, you know, it touches me somewhere. That's really what happened. Frank, we appreciate you taking the time today. Hopefully we get to talk to you soon. I appreciate y'all.